Hello, I'm Sam and it's just after six in the morning <clears throat> and I'm in the Highlands of Scotland and yeah I know I've been standing here for the last couple of videos um, but this is really close to the cottage where I live and uh, early morning is when I have the, the most clarity and uh, you know believe me I try and make a video as soon as one is published I try and make another one and I have to go through a long process of walking and talking and trying to get to something that I think I need to say and invariably that changes over the days and then I wake up I begin to wake up with such clarity and then I know what it is I need to say and then it still takes me I don't know two or three attempts <clears throat> so let's hope this is the one um, it's a beautiful, still, calm morning. Yeah, these videos are much more difficult for me to make now. Much more difficult. Because for the last few years, I, I've been talking about pain. I've been exploring the wound that fastened inside me my whole life. And now I'm making sense of something else, something unknown. Uh, I've spoken about it in a couple of videos and, and called it becoming because it feels like a becoming, a becoming nothing. Becoming nothing, becoming real. Becoming peace, becoming freedom. And that is unknown. David White in one of his um, poems, my favorite poem that he's written actually, what I must tell myself. There's a couple of lines in it where he says, um, I feel like a blind child, arms outstretched, trying to put together a world. Um, and it, it does feel mysterious. So, anyway, I'll get into what I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about some things that might be upsetting for some people because so I'm going to talk about that feeling of disgust and revulsion many of us feel and sexuality as well. Um, intimacy. Uh, so just be aware of that if you keep watching. So, you know, I had a, an inner feeling of filth. I will say this, I'm going to end on, I'm going to end on a happy, in a happy place as well. I'm going to end in a happy place, so don't worry, this isn't just all going to be distressing. Um, yeah, um, you know, I, I lived with that feeling all my life, the feeling of uh, disgust with myself, uh, and it had been there ever since I was a small boy, feeling that I was inwardly corrupt. And that inner feeling of being filthy became an outer manifestation of that feeling. And so I was very dirty and, and smelly as a, as a little boy and my underwear was usually catering shit, stale piss. I was filthy. And I, you know, I remained like that all the way through my childhood and it was very distressing but I was so dissociated from the from the terror that I lived in. Um, I was just disgusted and horrified with the fact that this object, this object, this place of pain was actually me. Um, and I was dissociated to varying degrees all of my life. And so you, you try and find a way to feel something, you try and find a way to connect, to make sense of it all and uh, the, the way that I found to feel something was drugs and alcohol. Uh, extreme sensations and those sensations became more and more and more extreme. Um, and as I've said before, I'm extremely lucky to be alive. Extremely lucky. And, and I value my life now. I esteem myself now. And I am happy that I made it this far. So, you know, one of the most disturbing things about childhood trauma 
is the distortion in our sexuality. Uh, so I'm 54 and I've never been intimate with anybody. Intimacy was brutality. Intimacy was violation. And because I thought I was so unworthy, so corrupt in the core of my being, you know, that's the form it took for me. And, you know, I think many of us live with a feeling that we can't even let anybody close enough to touch us, close enough to know us. Um, and I think it's because we don't even know ourselves. We know the story of us. We know the story of our experiences. We know the person we became as a consequence of those experiences. We're like a caged animal. Uh, desperately fighting for survival. Finding a way. Finding a way to survive. And you know, it cannot be overstated, the consequences of childhood trauma, persistent relational trauma. You know, and I think that the reason that we, we live the way that we do, reducing and simplifying the story of us and the story of the world into a manageable scenario where, you know, we can make sense of it all, is because if we really feel the immensity of the pain that we're holding inside us, it would destroy us. And so we have to reduce the language of feeling with which we understand ourselves in the world. Because if we expanded that language, if we deepened that feeling, that language of feeling, we would feel such pain, um, we wouldn't be able to function. And I think that's what happened to me when I had a breakdown. I experienced a terrible breakdown over the last few years. And for about two or three years, it was a, a state of timelessness and terror because I didn't know how I was going to make it, if I was going to make it. But over the last few months, I have begun to emerge. Um, and when I did fall apart, when I did experience that devastating breakdown, I began to feel, I began to feel the immensity of everything that had been held inside me as I protected myself from it. And it did destroy me. It destroyed the person I'd become. It destroyed me. And so from that point on, you know, you have no choice really. I have no choice. Discover who I really am. Who am I without the coping strategies? Who was the person I perhaps could have been? And that's a journey of discovery that's obviously just beginning for me. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I had to go through over the last few months as I started to rebuild is, you know, obviously the grieving process, the grieving of the loss of, it feels like the loss of everything because it really is. It's the loss of a life. It's the loss of the person you should have been. It's the loss of love and tenderness and the loss of our place here. The loss of self-esteem, the loss of intimacy. And that's what we protect ourselves from, the clear seeing of the cost, the clear seeing the cost of our survival. What do we lose when we survive? So the grief is the clear seeing of that as well. What does it cost you in your life just to make it through? 
That's heartbreaking when you see that. But you know, something miraculous has happened over the last few months. You know, as I saw clearly what happened to me, I also saw clearly with the objectivity of somebody that was freeing themselves of illusion and stories and being willing to see the things I didn't want to see at any other point in my life. I saw that it wasn't my fault. I saw that it wasn't my fault. And that dawning realization that I was an innocent child took time. But that dawning realization, that lightness of being cleanses the years of feeling like there was something inwardly filthy about me. It cleanses the years of degradation and violation as over and over and over again I invited violation because that's all I thought I was worth. And I feel clean now. I feel clean. I feel clean. And that feeling that I lived with my entire life isn't there anymore. And you know, the final piece of this puzzle, you know, as I've been trying to make this video over the last couple of weeks, and I think my willingness to, to dig as deep as I can and try and find the right, try just trying to find the truth and share that truth opens something inside me and, and I discover where it is I'm trying to go. And it, it, something, some other part of me reveals what I need to say over time. And I wake every morning with it presented to me so clearly. And yesterday morning I woke up and I woke up after the most beautiful dream I'd ever had. I was a, a soldier in a desert and the sun was shining and I had my rifle slung over my back and I found a baby lying in the sand. It was a newborn, helpless. And I picked up the, this baby, this naked baby, and it was red and gently crying and I picked it up and I looked at him and I held him to me and I felt his the warmth of his rosy cheeks on mine and I knew that every plan every loop of thought in my mind everything that I was grasping for in the world to try and make myself more real or draw me into a future that hasn't happened. Everything I would sacrifice to love and care for that child. And I loved him. And I felt this beautiful, warm glow inside me. And that child, of course, is me. And that soldier is me. And I know what self-love is now. I've never known what self-love was. But I do now. And it's that helpless child that perhaps is the most difficult for us to find inside us because we don't want to be helpless. We can't afford to be helpless. We can't afford to be that vulnerable. But it's that vulnerability that makes us human. It's that vulnerability that brings us into right now and makes us available. And we begin to feel the joy and the pain of life really intimately than is possible. To heal that child, to love that child, is what we need to do, I think. It's 
So that's what I've been going through this week. Pretty incredible. And, you know, I said this in the last video, I think, that, you know, when you become present, this is how I feel, just beginning to inhabit myself with no apology, no apology, this is me, here I am. My life has value. Just to feel that at the present moment becomes everything. The present moment becomes everything. There's no need to incessantly plan or control. There's no need to carry the years, decades in my, my situation, the decades of self-harm, self-abuse, self-hate. There's just no need. All of that belongs to the person I used to be. It is not defining any longer. So this is possible. If I can do it, you can do it. But we have to be prepared to fall apart, I'm afraid. To break apart. To feel it all and begin to let it go. And then we can, we can enter reality and not live in the world that we've created in our own mind. And that world is only as small as our fear. It's full of brokenness and pain. You can't carry it with you. You can't take it with you into freedom. You can't. So, I think I said everything I wanted to say. It's early. And, uh, um, my mind hasn't woken up, which is good, because that's why I try and make these early in the morning. I'm trying not to tell stories, I'm trying to speak truthfully. So, yeah, that's it. If you need to talk, just reach out. I talk on Zoom. Zoom. Can't get into really long email exchanges because I'll be writing all day. So I can talk to someone every day though. So if you, if you need to talk, I'm here. Uh, I'm not a counselor or a therapist, but uh, all I can do is share my experience. Okay. Be kind to yourselves because that's where it all begins. Be kind. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle with yourselves. Okay. Bye.